So I worked in the shipbuilding industry, the banking industry, um, aerospace, and another a few others that have come to grief. I don't take any personal responsibility for that, but uh, it did at least, and I think critically, um, prepare me for uh, for an op- the opportunities of medical leadership back back in the NHS because I had to work with management systems in multiple different organisations, both in the UK and wider afield. Um, and the first thing I really learned about that is that if you actually wanted to make a difference, you had to have influence. So if influence is one of the key aspects of leadership, I learned it. I also learned that occupational medicine wasn't really a clinical specialty because that's what I got into it as. It was really a branch of public health. And if you really wanted to change the well-being of a workforce, you really had to be, have influence, influence at the top table with the chief executive, with the director of HR. So I learned that, and that was the key lesson for me. Clinical governance is a really, um, it, in my view, do, arguably doesn't really exist. It's a bit of a fix to engage doctors. Clinical governance, to me, was just always corporate governance by another name. Um, and I convinced the chief executive that that was the case, and, and uh, we didn't kind of use the term corporate governance, but we created the idea of integrated governance. Um, and that then be actually um, became a, quite a, a wide-held view in the health service, and other people moved with that idea as well. So my real move from, if you like, quite a, a, a niche area to general management in a health service setting was the idea that you could actually... Um, integrate all aspects of governance from health and safety management for staff to patient safety to finance um, and all the other aspects of it and really that was what kind of brought me into a a deputy medical director's role and eventually into a medical director's role very early on in my career Hugo Massey Taylor sat me down for a tutorial he'd been on my interview panel and um, he talked about the idea of um, where authority comes from Um, and the idea that um, that it, most doctors are com- comfortable with the idea of authority or responsibility coming from below. Doctors are quite comfortable representing themselves and others. So, you know, they're quite happy to be part of the BMA, quite happy to be elected onto a college role or whatever. But actually, the penny dropped for me what, uh, w- w- with Hugo's comments about what was meant by moving over to the dark side because everybody talks about going to the dark side but actually I think it really was ve- a very simple thing and it is actually that switch of accountability the doctors are uncomfortable with the idea that the accountability actually goes upwards that I'm accountable to a chief executive who's accountable to a permanent secretary who's accountable to a minister and that in Northern Ireland is a very very short accountability you can be in front of our minister very very quickly um, so happy uh, those who live in a slightly larger um, <laughs> uh, pond. Um, so I thought that uh, I've, that stuck with me with Hugo, and I refined that idea quite a bit. And it's always it's always stuck with me, and it's been part of my kind of concept about the journey and of trying to explain to people how how they have to understand and use the accountability idea. For me, leadership is about value, vision, and influence, and ultimately, it's about having influence, and that's what I brought from occupational medicine. If you haven't got influence, you ain't got any leadership and you're not going to change anything. So for me, it is always about having that, leadership, that, that opportunity to influence. And what I certainly tell every, every aspiring clinical lead or clinical director or a young doctor is, you know, what level of influence do you want in the system? What do you want to change? Because you've got to want to change something. Not much point being a leader if you don't want to change something. Um, and if you want to change something, how are you going to get influence? Um, and work it out. And whether it's natural or innate or whether you have to learn it through a framework, it's all about that, very simply for me. I was asked to give you an idea of three challenges from Northern Ireland. Um, We have integrated health and social care. That's an opportunity, but it's probably one of our biggest challenges. Um, We have um, a problem with geographical isolation. Northern Ireland has 1.8 million people, yet we run practically every tertiary service any of you have. So at the moment... Um, we have a, a challenge with paediatric cardiac surgery. We're just not big enough, okay? So that, in a way, is the second of the challenges I'll give you. We're trying to run an English model with a population of 1.8 million. Um, and uh, 
Sweet and Kennedy's report saving sustainable just doesn't work for us. It never will work for us. So our solutions have to be international. We have to now really break down the barriers with, with the Irish Republic to create a, a true network, in, network with Ireland. And that is about marrying healthcare systems that are very different. So that's a big challenge for me. The other one is actually trying to use the English model. So we have we adopt all the worst of your targets, um, but we don't have your we don't have very many of your tools. So we don't have tariff, um, and we we have a healthcare system where we have politicians who want us to meet your targets, but actually don't want to change anything. So they want to keep every small hospital and every small village open, and they want to keep an ED department open everywhere that is a Tesco's Express. And those are, our, those are our challenges. I suppose the third real challenge, and it's the same challenge for everybody else, is just our ageing population, that demographic. And if there's time, I can talk about some of the solutions we're trying to come up with. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jane.